Hello and welcome to this uh, class. My name is Serum Komedivian and I will be taking you through the basics, the basics of PHP. We are going to discuss a number of things and we are going to look at uh, how to start PHP and how uh, you get along with PHP. This course is not uh, intending to look at HTML, so when you are in attending this, possibly we assume that you have uh, possibly looked at HTML and CSS. We are going to learn how to code using PHP and how to create dynamic sites. What we want to intend to do is uh, to create something that is dynamic. We want to look at dynamic sites. That means uh, we need to all also to, to know the difference between dynamic sites and static sites. Static site, what we call a static site, is uh, a site that does not change its content. Let's look at a site like uh, echoecho.com. Echoecho.com is one site that I've noticed to be static. This is a site that has been like that ever since I started learning how to code using HTML and JavaScript. So when you look at this site, it has always been like that over years. That means a site of this nature does not change. It doesn't change uh, on request. Its content has already been created and it's coded. It has been coded and has stored just the way you see it. So that means its content does not change on according to user requests. However, for a static site, its content changes according to a user request. So you let's assume that you are visiting a site like jumia.com. Okay. Jumia.com is one site that uh, helps in e-learning, e-commerce. So with Jumia.com, its content is dynamic. That means its content is going to change according to a user request. And that's what makes it dynamic. Its content is not static. It will not be like that forever and ever. No. Its content is simply going to always be dynamic. It will depend on what you want to see, what you are requesting the system to give you. That's what it will uh, deliver to you. Okay, so that's what makes a uh, dynamic site. So suppose I want to view some content to do with electronics. So the content that I'm going to view, the page that I'm, I'm going to view, has content that is related to electronics and i will be able to uh, click at a particular commodity and i will add it to my cart and possibly make a, a transaction with these guys so when it comes to dynamic sites its content is purely managed at the server okay it's purely managed and the content is actually fed into what we call a database management system. And then the database management system further gives access to the database. So realize that in the architecture, we have something that links the two, the user and the server. That's a browser. The browser, you as a user, you are interacting with the browser. This is a browser. You are interacting with the browser and you're making your request based on the interface that you see on a browser. Then the browser, once you click at the submit button, the browser is going to post whatever that you have requested to the server. Then the server will receive it and it will detect that you are using a language, a special language, a script, special scripting language called PHP and it will interpret that php then it will submit the php to it will interpret it and it will uh, submit the request to the database management system for the data 
the database management system will decode the, the the commands and then it will request for the data from the database then the database will respond back to the database management system and the database man management system will also respond back to the preprocessor the preprocessor will encode this data this time it is not going to be displayed as php but it's going to be displayed as uh, html and it will be fed back to you as html through the browser and using the interface that you have designed possibly so you realize that we shall need a preprocessor and the preprocessor needs to be a managed it is part of apache server so what do we need we need a server we need a server to be able to to work out with dynamic sites and the server that i'm i'm recommending and i'm going to use is uh zamp the zamp has apache started and then uh it has mysql which will have a, an access to the database to be able to use your server effectively that every time you you start you click at the start button you simply select uh, zamp and the zamp will uh, will help you to to get access to the database and all that instantly so you simply scroll down and then look out for x make sure that you select zamp and then select zamp control panel once you select control panel this is going to pop up on your computer screen it's going to pop up and then it will show you that yes you can start all services my service now uh, currently my service were running and then it will show like that all service that means you can start a particular service you simply click at a service that you want to be started we want just two services to be started and that is apache and uh, mysql so in this course if you need to be uh, to have your server configured you can as well click at configure and once you click at configure you should be able to get this interface in this interface please select apache auto start of modules make sure that apache is checked and mysql is checked so many times i don't want to see this interface on my screen once it starts i want it to start a, a control panel minimize so whenever it starts i want it to be hidden somewhere so that's why i have this checked start minimized okay so click save changes made and then uh you can as well don't quit just click close so when you click close it's it will appear as if it is closed but it is running in the background it is running there my server is still on and double click at it it will be able acquiring it when you click uh quit it will be loaded out of memory meaning you will have closed it and you cannot uh, maybe when you start it afresh okay you start the service afresh so i'm clicking close and we want to get started my server is already running up and running so whenever you have uh, you have uh, a file that you want to work with we need a text editor this text editor you can you can use a text editor of your choice by default microsoft will give you a default text editor to access it press the, con the windows key on your keyboard and then press r and then type notepad simply type notepad and then you click uh, ok so once you click notepad ok you realize that you we shall have this interface we shall have this popping up and this is a text editor it will do the same thing just like the text editor that i prefer using which is brackets so you can do the same thing if at all you don't have brackets but otherwise i have possibly need to uh, i need always to, to give you a link to brackets so that you can as well download uh, brackets for yourself 
All right, so I'm going to use brackets. I like using brackets so much. So click uh, to launch brackets. You click the start button and then select, you go to the, uh, I'm using uh, Windows 10. So you go to B and then select brackets. All right, so let's start up uh, a new page. New page. So once it's, it starts, you realize that, uh, let me just do that, split a little. Uh, I want to create a new file. Okay. Under new file. Okay, I don't want it to be split. Let it just. I don't know why it's not it's not responding. Okay, if it's not responding, uh, well, let's try Plan B. Let's create using uh, Notepad. A uh, Notepad. There it is. Okay, so we have that. We shall uh, possibly use that as long as the code is visible. That's all we need to see as long as we see the code really, really visible. All right. So if we have that, all we need to do is we, we want to learn how to use PHP and we want to greet the world. We are not interested in HTML. We shall learn how to embed a HTML, a PHP within HTML, and we shall also learn uh, how to embed HTML within PHP. Okay, so let us first start uh, the, the right way, the usual way that will help us to get uh, started with HTML, uh, or sorry, with PHP. So to start PHP just like HTML, normally in HTML you learn that you have the the starting tag HTML and you also have the ending tag which is HTML okay so applies to PHP we are using tags okay so HTML PHP uh, uses also tags so we have the starting tag of PHP and that is the starting tag of PHP and then this is the ending tag of PHP so when you realize that with this Whatever that you put between the two tags, don't don't be tempted of doing that. That is wrong. So uh, we are learning basics of PHP basics. So uh, whatever that you put between the two tags will be considered a special code. Will be considered as a program of PHP. It will not be simply HTML. It will be simply PHP. Let us greet the world. As long as we want to save a file and we want the preprocessor to understand that yes, this is a special file of PHP, it is not simply HTML, all you need to do is to simply uh, echo out. We can echo something out. And whatever that you want to echo out, as long as it is not something called a variable, as long as you want to echo out a statement, even if it is Luganda, even if it is Swahili, even if it is, as long as you want to echo it out, you simply type echo, and then that statement has to be between two quotations. You can say habari. Habari. Habari ndugu. Okay. And we can put an exclamation mark there. Habari ndugu. And then, because we were learning, uh, we are learning at, uh, PHP, the basics of PHP, we want to learn basing on what we call a syntax. A syntax, syntax is a grammar, grammar of a language. A grammar of a programming language is what we call syntax. So no matter which language you are coding in, you have to follow rules and regulations that are supposed to be governing that language. And that language we are using PHP. Most of the programming languages, we shall have a, a semicolon to mark the end of our statement. So the semicolon in English is just the same way as you would write, uh, I am happy, 
I am happy to learn PHP and you have a full stop so the semicolon is the same as using a full stop in any other language so whenever you are typing whenever you are writing a statement in PHP or any other programming language most of those languages will allow you to attach a full what we consider to be a full stop in our programming so a semicolon needs always to be marking the end of a statement so I need to get rid of that I don't need it and then let us save our file to save your file click at file and then select save as once you select save as you realize that you will be provided with a dialog box and in this dialog box navigate where you have installed your server your ZAMP by default if you did not change that much settings that you had when you're installing by default your ZAMP will be taken to a uh, logical drive C and logical drive C locate a folder called ZAMP when you double click ZAMP you will realize that in the list that you have locate a folder called htdocs that folder double click at, to open it and you are supposed to save to create a folder within htdocs and that folder will have all your files let's create a folder within htdocs a new folder and we shall call it basics or PHP basics and then press enter to confirm to the name then open the folder that you have just created HT a PHP basics double click to open it and there you are going to save your work save change the file name Give it a new name, lecture one or lect one. Being that we are using PHP and it is not an ordinary language just like HTML, even in HTML you had to insert put dot HTML. But we are not using HTML. We are using a PHP. So you have to use dot PHP. It is a file extension that is required otherwise whenever you are simply uh, coding and you're not indicating that it's a PHP file your file is not going to work out well so what we need is uh, to have a proper layout we have we need to have a proper assignment of the extension so whatever file even if you are coding ph even if you are, have created a file of html and you expect to use a tag or a code of php i am strongly recommending you to use to name that file and the file name don't save it as html you save it as dot php small letters and then you click save then after saving our file can we look at how to echo out that file from the server so all you need to do is to have any browser of your choice have any browser and then in the URL bar type localhost localhost slash the folder that you created the folder that you created we created our folder we want to locate our folder on uh, this we want to create our folder it's on that and uh, 
that's on the HD docs zamp and then locate HD docs there then locate the folder that we have created we created a folder uh, PHP basics so I'm navigating to that folder PHP basics so let's you all I need to do is to click at localhost slash PHP basics exactly the way it is and then press enter when you press enter you realize that the server the system is going to go to the server and echo route that code and it will realize that we have a file called lect1 so when you click at lect1 you should be able to see the content habari ndugu alternatively all you need to do is to simply uh, do it this way localhost localhost slash php basics slash lect1 the file that we want to open lect one dot php and then press enter so it will echo out habari ndugu again that is another way alternatively you can as well use the IP address of your system the default IP address of a system is 127.0.0.1 so when you simply echo out that it's as a, the same way as echoing localhost and this time it will just open the default index of localhost so let's give it a target 127.0.0.1 slash the folder that I want to open PHP basics slash lect1 dot never forget to have that dot PHP so it opens the same thing habari ndugu okay so whenever you want to echo out something on the browser all you need to do is to go to your PHP and then uh, echo out something on PHP just need to echo out that code on PHP all right okay so after that we can as well echo out so many things I want us to learn to get to learn something so let's echo out some something in English programming is fun And then save changes then refresh so realize that it is going to put it on only one line why is that it's because PHP is does not actually recognize white spaces and the only way we can recognize these white spaces is by use of some bit of HTML so let's put a break there HTML break line break and then save changes made a refresh so you realize that it will put it on another line so notice that this time I am adding HTML tags within the statements of PHP it is treated as a statement so that means I can have HTML within PHP so I can hold uh, this as h3 and then have this as h3 and the code of h3 save changes made refresh and we have our statement there so you realize that this time I am adding just PHP holds the HTML 
I'm having HTML treated as a statement. And that way it will help me to easily come up with any structure of what I need. As long as I am using PHP, I can come up with any structure. I can change the layout of a page. All right. After looking at that, let's look at how to work with something called variables. So what is a variable? A variable, we can easily uh, interpret a variable as uh, a location in memory that is created as long as the page is running. That will be a variable. In other words, it will, it's kind of like a, a container. Uh, that's what we call a variable. It's kind of like a container. So it will hold our information that we want to use. So a variable can echo out. Uh, let me also use this so that you can get a better understanding about it. So you can as well use uh, single quotations and we can say variables variables are containers containers of values or data. Or data. Save changes made. Control S, and then you can as well just press F5 on your keyboard for this to refresh. So we have that variables are containers of values or data. So in other words, you can as well. Let me call something. Let me just echo out something. Can okay. Let me just echo out these. These are just HTML tags. So line, and when we refresh this, it will put one line there. Okay, nice and lovely. All right. So notice that at times, because PHP has gone on advancing from personal home page, PHP, to a language that can be used and it is competing with other language on other languages on market. So realize that sometimes it might allow you to add content and some some of the syntax is going on changing day by day. So like I said in the beginning, you can as well, it is a good practice to put those delimiters or what we call a, full, a logical full stop. And then we can also leave it. Okay. So to me, it, because we are just starting, hold on to this practice. Just hold it on because we are stepping in the world of programming. Just hold it on to observe the, the syntax. All right, so let's carry out some computations. So we can echo out uh, using. Uh, variables to hold information okay so we can uh, use the variables to hold this information and we can echo out that kind of information right so let's see how we can use that and this is just like a title so we shall have that and uh, can have that and there. All right. There we are. 
and this will be kind of like our title all right so we are we want to learn how do we work with statements in php to work with statements in php we use what we call a variable and a variable normally starts with a dollar sign in php so we are saying we want to store something like my name is damian sorry comma and because it is a statement i need to enclose it in brackets in the quotations so i'll cut it out and then enclose it in place it in under quotations it says statement still it is a statement it has to end with a it has to end with a semicolon and we want to store this statement somewhere so we shall store it to the left so we shall go and say okay create a variable a variable uh, intro okay so how would we create and store it there we have already created a variable intro so you need to put a equal an equal sign so it has it is a statement that says because this is a statement and it is uh, simply kept to the left so you keep the variables to the left let's echo out something when i echo out echo what do i need to echo i want to echo so that i see my name is damian serunkoma i'm in need of just displaying this and but you realize that it is already saved to a variable it is already saved to a container called in dollar intro so do i need to call the name or i need to call the variable so i need to call the variable name dollar intro because the dollar intro already has my content the value you realize that for the dollar intro it because it is a variable i do not enclose it under quotations i don't but i simply just echo it out save changes made and then refresh so you are supposed to see my name is damian serum comma so this is a variable suppose i I delete out that save changes made control s and then refresh so the name has to disappear why because I have I've just assigned it to the left but I have not considered it echoing it out that's a challenge so i need to echo out the name through the intro value variable and i terminate or i stop i put a full stop to my statement save changes made and i refresh and i'm supposed to have my name in dem is damian serokoma there alternatively alternatively you can as well say okay i don't i don't my name is no longer damian i'm uh, damian sarongoma uh i uh, maybe change it to daniel tumusime and i save changes made and i refresh so it changes to my name is daniel tomosime why it's because i am saving the content in a folder and a variable called intro and whatever the system is picking is picking what we have in intro 
that's the use of these variables uh whenever you're working with with programming languages a variable is one thing that is very hard to avoid because it helps us to hold data to hold data at runtime all right so now that you know how to have this structured let's create something basing on mathematics all right we are just utilizing the same statement copying copy it out and then place it there uh, holding information using variables for computations Save changes made and refresh. So we are. Uh, this was to hold just information. Let's now see how do we save information to this variable. Let's compute something. We shall have a refresh of. Uh, uh, remember the th back in the high school and. Uh, pre-primary we, we had the things of algebra you remember that let's do something funny we have you remember the mathematicians mathematics teachers used to say a value a so a remember the such statements a equal to five okay and then they put that and then they say b equal to uh, eight and then they say the task that we want to do, we want to add A plus a B. What do you expect? What would be the answer? A plus B equal to, and you give it, you give your answer answers 13. So we want to create calculate something like that. So let's simply change this kind of mathematics. My answer would easily be 13. But let us just change this kind of mathematics into a, uh, a program. So let's change it, this statement to PHP. Because A is towering 5 and B is towering 8, that means A and B, they are variables. And variables, we have said, variables, they start with a dollar sign. So let's put them treat them as variables and this one we said according to the syntax it stores to the left so our answer that we expect is supposed to be at the left and this we shall have it as answer okay so since it is also a variable we are going to change this to variables so we shall have that and because these are variables that are holding information and we terminate that information so these are statements too all we need to do is to put those i don't know whether when we leave it like that it, the system is also going to accept we shall test and see So it, it, this allows us to have PHP written on only one line. It is possible. It is allowed because this ends the statement and we shall begin another statement. It ends and we shall begin another statement. It ends. Then we can as well do the echoing of the final. What do you think the final is? We want to echo the answer. So you echo out dollar answer and you terminate so you realize that when you do that you will have the system up and running it will have an effective way of uh, displaying our information let us echo out and we we'll refresh our page so I have uh, my answer as 13 however 
this kind of uh, this kind of uh, uh, statement in PHP it makes life hard when you're reading it makes readability very hard so better put it on on uh, individual lines to make to ease your interpretation of the program we shall have five stored to dollar a which is a variable and then we shall have eight stored in dollar uh, b which is also a variable then we shall have the answer which is a variable storing whatever that we have in dollar a and then plus whatever that we have in dollar b then you will simply echo out dollar answer save changes made and then refresh our page so it still gives us the same value 13 let's now change it to 4 change 5 to 4 so this time around dollar a does not have 5 it will have 4 save changes made and refresh so it is we expect to have a 12 the 12 will automatically be captured can we make our statement uh, user friendly here we I want to introduce something called a concatenation character a concatenation character is used to add statements plus variables or statement and a statement so a, a concatenation character we shall use a concatenation character in PHP is a dot so we shall have because we want a statement we want to make the statement uh, handy it, it is interpretable and it is easy for a person to understand the statement so we shall enter there and we say the answer the answer is space so it is dollar answer but when we simply save it like that, it's going to create an error. So when we simply save changes and refresh, you shall have an error generated. Why? Because we are adding, we want to echo out a statement, but at the same time we want to echo out a, a variable. So we need to, a way to bond the two together. And the only way we can bond the two together is to simply put a dot between the statement and a variable so put a dot there and that is a concatenation character concatenation character is going to enable us to to display a statement added together with a variable so that the statement makes meaning to the end user refresh and says the answer is 12 the answer to what it's interesting to say Jesus is the answer then what is the question right so let's put because we have already computed up there let us just echo out dollar a which is an a to have something appearing like this we want to have something like 4 a 4 plus an 8 equal to and then uh, we shall have the answer there then we have the statement down our answer is the answer is 12 that's what we want to display let's try it what do you think in just uh, 10 seconds write what you think how the statement is going to look like all right so if your answer is 
like this, then you're right. So we shall have to echo, this is now the solution, echo dollar a, okay, so if your dollar a echo dollar a, we want to concatenate it, so plus dollar b, a plus b, which will give us a 4 plus an 8. But you realize that this is not going to simply give us the solution. This is simply going to add, it will be as if I'm executing this statement here, which will automatically output the answer. It will automatically output the answer. Let's try that and we see. We shall have a 12. 12, because we don't have this echo, that it is a, it, we have what we call a syntax error. It is expecting an echo plus something. All right? So when we do it like that, and let's see. We have 12. The answer is 12. We have the 12 because when you add this plus that, it's still going to give you 12. So 12 and 12, it will still give you 12. So in order for us to to kind of uh, have a smoother or a smooth way of computations, all we need to do is to ensure that our computations are really nice to have and uh, uh, they are readable. Otherwise, if you cannot have a, a computation that is readable, uh, things might not work out well. So let's have this as a statement. So all I need to do is to treat this as a statement. So I'll need to enclose my plus sign in there because for it to appear as if it is a statement. So when I uh, do that, Possibly I need to echo some something. I need to echo some HTML to break it. So break the line. You realize that this time, this is a variable and a variable, but we are adding it together with a statement. So we shall need a a uh, concatenation character between a statement and a variable. So we shall put a dollar dot just leave some spaces there for readability. Okay, and then we save changes made. Control S. Refresh here and realize that it will put 4 plus 8. So 4 plus 8 if you need uh, the value 4 plus 8 equal to so if we need the equal to we shall still do a dot uh, can have the equal sign there equal to and then we shall have the answer okay dot the answer dollar answer Save changes made and then refresh here. So we shall have 4 plus 8 equal to 12. So that means even if now I am to change this to 100, save changes made, control S and refresh, realize that the statement will have to change. The entire statement will automatically change. It will automatically change basing on a variable. These are variables that we are simply basing on to extract an answer and also to have a, a more friendly, user-friendly way of displaying this kind of information. So even if we have some figure that is broad and we save changes, we realize that this time it will automatically give you the answer. One thing we need to notice when we use big figures is that 
PHP automatically recognizes the data types that you have assigned. In other languages, you'll have something, always you'll have something like int i, okay? Like int i, that means it's an integer i and you are storing a variable like 8 or 5. That means this i is catered for and it is given a data type of integer. And we can have the float, we can have doubles, we can have... So for it, it does not, it's not sensitive to that. It automatically detect if it is a double or if it is a string. Okay, string S. And the string is supposed to be uh, possibly uh, Damien. A combination of characters is what we call a string in other languages. But we have not done that with PHP. Why? Because PHP automatically detects whatever that you put in that container, it is automatically going to detect it. Okay, so that's the beauty about PHP. Even if now I'm to put something like uh, 57.9 and I'm to add it with uh, something like uh, 45.8, save changes made it will automatically detect that these are floating floating numbers okay they are this small they have the small places even if i'm just to add this automatically and i'm to consider it as just a number an integer and i replace it with that automatically the system is going to automatically adjust so the beauty about php for it it just detects which data type are we interested in true or false is it boolean let's take that can we take the floating numbers can we take the, the integer data types can we take the strings can it automatically adjusts and gets those values out and echoes them the right way my assignment with you just let us just try calculating making a, a simple calculator after this this statement we are going to make a simple calculator basing on uh, what you know an HTML so this is going to be in our chapter 2 hope you will have learned something please subscribe to the channel if you would wish to subscribe for more videos and also like the channel ensure that you practice php is a language and the best way to learn a language is by speaking that language the best way to learn a language practice will help you to learn a language till next time may god bless you stay safe thank you